Anyhow, so we're going to have some guys that are going to go up here as a guest set. They're relatively new or they've been doing a little while. They want to come up here and do a little bit of time. They've been passed through the area or whatever have you. And then we have our booked comedians that are going to come up here. But at the end of it all, you guys are going to have one fantastic time because tonight we have JoJo Woodford with us here tonight. That's right, JoJo Thug Woodford is in the house, and you guys are going to have a blast with them. Hell of a funny guy, so definitely going to want to stick around, hang out. And tell you what, guys, this is what you do. You sit back, you relax. Let us do all the hefty, heavy lifting, hefty living. I don't know what the hell I'm saying anymore. It's fine. I've been here since 6 and drinking th since that time, so it's fine. I'll work it out. I'll work it out. My tongue will become untied at some point in time. But we'll have a lot of fun, and uh, it's sure to be a good time. So you guys sit back, relax. We're going to do it all for you. And... Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to start out, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I recently became a dad again. Yay! Thank you, thank you. My wife and I, we are adopting an 11-month little girl. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's terribly sweet. I had no idea what a heartache felt like till I saw her cry, so much to my wife's chagrin of 18 years. She was like, really, you didn't know what love was? Asshole. <laughs> I was like, who are you again? No. <laughs> Question, so by round of applause, how many people have had infant children in their lives? Infant children, round of applause, round of applause. <laughs> Fantastic, I have a question for you guys. Um, does the shit go to New Jersey before it comes out of their ass? Just, just a question. I was like, my God, this smells like, it's ridiculous, and it's like part Velcro, part toxic waste, I don't understand. It's a weird color. It, that's normal? I swear to God, I thought I rescued her from like a, a, a Mexican terrorist one morning because it looked like a chicken burrito exploded in her diet. I, I was like, what is going on in this thing? You know, and here I am, this, you know, six foot two, 300 pound, you know, war veteran going, don't worry, honey, I'm going uh, to take it. I'm going to take it for the team. It's, uh, it's fine. She's looking at me like, what in God's name is wrong with you? And my wife's in the room, other room laughing hysterically because the monitor was on and she's listening to her, her big brave husband almost gag on their child. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, before that, I was a stepdad. Uh, I have uh, two boys that uh, came with my marriage. Um, I tried to bring them back, but Sears wouldn't take them. <laughs> no, nah, they're, good. they're good boys. I, I've known them most of their lives. And, uh, they're, and I always called myself a, a stepdad. And my, how I de identify that is I say it only takes me one step to assume that role as dad. And given the fact that my wife's ex, I've been two-stepping for 18 years now, so it's been a lot of fun. Yeehaw! <laughs> yeah, I come from the Northeast. Any Northeastern people here in here? Anybody from the Northeast? No? I'm all by myself? Shit. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I, 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 have, a, I have a unique upbringing. Um, I was actually born Jewish, raised Catholic, uh, which means that I, I am all the alcoholic of a Catholic person, but I'm very frugal about it, you know. So I sip my drink, I do. Uh, my dad is Irish-Italian, and my mom's the Jew, so therefore I'm a drunk with an attitude problem, but I feel bad about it. My parents were cute, though. Uh, you know, when deciding on how to raise their children, my uh, father flipped a coin in the air, in which my mother grabbed it as fast as she possibly could. <laughs> that, that's a Jew joke. She's looking around like, why are they clapping? I don't get that. <laughs> Jews are frugal. Uh, that term, Jew me down, that's, that's where that comes from. That's real. It's, no, it's totally real. It's totally real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my parents... I swear, though, they, they were good people. They just, uh, they had really unique ways of dealing with things. You know, like, uh, my dad had dad sayings. If a dad had dad sayings, like, my dad, like, to, to motivate me to eat something, he would say, eat it, it'll put hair on your chest. Which I thought was really a weird way to motivate a nine-year-old to eat asparagus, you know. <laughs> or if, like, I skinned my knee outside, you know, he'd tell me, rub some dirt on it, you know. And I'm outside rubbing dirt on it, going, why does it hurt? And he's looking at me. <sighs> I'm not really your father, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> but my dad's, uh, my favorite dad saying, the one that terrified us, was if we were messing up in public. And he'd go, oh, okay. And we knew when we got home, we were done. That was, that was it. 
My mom, on the other hand, my mom was in charge of the physical discipline in the house, and thank God, because my dad, you know, he's six foot three Marine uh, from Vietnam, so you didn't really want him laying hands on you. But my mom was first chair, and uh, she used to hit us with the wooden spoon. Anybody get hit with a wooden spoon growing up? <laughs> my mom didn't even care if it was in use or not. You know, <laughs> you'd get hit, and you knew it was what was for dinner. You know, it was like, damn, spaghetti again. Need salt, mom. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every month, uh, my family, though, they, they always like to do things traditionally. And there, there was always, like, li little things that we would do all the time. Like, every year we'd go on vacation. Or, like, every month we would go out for a special dinner. Like, you know, in this particular month, uh, you know, we'd, we'd all get dressed up. And we were going out for Italian. So we're at Pizza Hut. And my father's in mid-order, just to show you how old I am, because we don't do that at Pizza Hut anymore, do we? But my father's in mid-order when the spitball goes right to his glasses. He finishes up the order. The waitress leaves laughing hysterically. My, fa my father takes his glasses off. He starts cleaning them. He's staring at my brother. Oh, okay. I never saw my brother again after that <laughs> night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They let me visit him in the ICU. It was fine. It was fine. He was still sitting there in his little pizza hut outfit, too. It was cute. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, I was in the military for 16 years. Thank you. Appreciate that. I uh, spent seven years in law enforcement. And I've been married for 18 years. Literally, I have thousands of hours of training. None of it prepared me to go bald. I started going bald when I was 23 years old. And then over 20 years, my hair did this weird migration thing. It went from my head to my back. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Glad you feel my pain. Glad you feel my pain. I figured if this migration continues, though, over the next 20 years, by the time I'm 60, I can sit on the toilet and it won't be cold anymore. <laughs> Suppose at that point in time, I can tell the temperature of the water, though, right? Woo yeah. <laughs> One way or another. <laughs> right, sir? Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to card you, but whatever. What I'm trying to say is my nuts will be in the water. That's what I'm trying to say. Right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really sucks. Uh, you know, having this thing happen to you, you know, I, I, I had long, luxurious hair in high school. I did. Stop staring at me like that. I did. I can show you pictures. She's like, whatever. You have too much forehead to have head. All right. <laughs> Young people. <laughs> no, I did. I had long hair. It sucked. It sucked. And uh, I, I got a... A fellow comic, he's, he's starting to show this migration. You know, he's in his 20s. I said, hey, got the migration going. He goes, yeah, I'll never be as fat as you are. I got feelings. It's not like I got up here and didn't know I was big. I know I'm big. I mean, whoever said black is slimming is full of shit, right? Look at this. It's like half the stage disappears every time I turn. I mean... I get it. I know I'm big. I mean, I, at 45 years old, I don't know when I went from portrait to landscape, but here it is. <laughs> That's bad. I'm sorry. Married folks? You guys married? Anybody married down here? No, not married. Married? How long have you guys been married? 15 years. All right, 15 years. Anybody be 15? Anybody be be apprentice? What? <laughs> Press, how long you and Mama Sue been married? 45. 45 years. Round of applause. 45 years. 45 years. 40, almost half a century. 40. If you killed somebody, you went about up by now. I'm just saying. 45 years. <laughs> no, I, you know, I think marriage is neat. I mean, like my wife, we, we, we've, had, we've had our ups and downs. 
Uh, she's a fantastic individual. She's, she cracks me up still to this day, makes me laugh. Uh, you're talking about a woman who, uh, while we're driving into traffic, if there's another car coming into our lane, she will literally go, at, eh? at. Eh? <laughs> like they can hear her. And then when we've passed them, she goes, jackass. She's funny, though. She is. She, uh, I mean, she lets me get away with all the crazy stuff I think about. Like, I, I'm in the bathroom the other day staring into the window wondering why your lap disappears when you stand up. I mean, you know, I just, I think of stump, stupid things like that. But I look in the mirror and I, I look at my boxer briefs and I'm thinking to myself, guys, none of us actually use that P-flap, do we? No one does it, right? No. I mean, we just, we just pull, well, I mean, if you're black, you take it out the bottom. But I'm saying... <laughs> The, the white guys, we just, right? So I took one for the team. I figured I'd, I'd, I'd try this out. First off, just so you guys know, you have to weave your hand through this weird maze thing, and your hand will get stuck. It's like a Chinese handcuff. All right, and I started panicking really bad, and I was in a Kroger bathroom, and there was two guys behind me, and one of them gave me his number. <laughs> and we're celebrating our third anniversary. Okay. <laughs> I'm just being serious. No, I'm not kidding. All right. No. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's funny, though. We still do uh, cute things. Like, uh, we do mirror messages. You guys ever seen those mirror messages? Do you know what those are? All right, so you, 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 a dry finger on a mirror. Okay, you write a little message, and then when it fogs up, you can see the message. So you come out of the shower to I love you or have a nice day. It's very sweet. So I got out of the, me the, the bathroom the other day and I come out of the shower and it says, I love you, have a good day. And then I see something else scrawled at the bottom of the corner. I look really close and it says, don't forget tonight's trash night. <laughs> kind of passive aggressive bullshit is this? So I rubbed it off and I wrote back, I already took care of that. And the pork chops were dry last night. <laughs> Got to nip this shit in the bud. Yeah, that was stupid. Uh, it escalated from there. I got out of the shower the next day. I said, oh, yeah, I don't like your mother. So we got into a big fight. I, you know what's funny about fighting? Uh, when you've been married 18 years, you fight differently than newlyweds. We got any, like, new couples in the house? New couples? Yeah. You guys fight differently than uh, Mary, old Mary. Like, you guys probably still, like, when you fight, you're like, we have to make up before we go to bed. I can't go to bed angry. I, I love you so much. <laughs> when you've been married 18 years and you get no fight, it's more like, do you have to breathe? I mean, your breathing is bothering me right now. Stop. <laughs> so uh, we, got, we got in a big fight, and... We went to our neutral corners, because that's what you do when you have access to guns and knives. And she's in the kitchen, and I'm in the living room, and I could hear her talking to herself, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I got to put a blanket on this one. <laughs> so I walk in the kitchen, and I'm like, um, who are you talking to, hon? She says, I'm talking to the dishes. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> what do they think about your cooking? Apparently, I wasn't done arguing yet. <laughs> and that was stupid. <laughs> you ever have somebody give you a look that triggered your fight or flight mechanism? <laughs> I literally took a step back. I was like, oh. <laughs> she said, do you know why I like doing dishes? Because I can hold them under the water and they don't struggle. <laughs> Glad that made you laugh. That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> She wasn't coming in the bathroom. I mean, there's water in that toilet. <laughs> oh, I tease her a lot. She's a good lady, though. I do. I tease her. And uh, the fact of the matter is, anybody who's ever met her for the first time absolutely has adored her. She is fantastic. She's a wonderful lady. 100% everybody loves her. All right, I guess that's not totally true. Like, my girlfriend hates her. Woo! Woo! Hates her. Santa, these are jokes. I'm just kidding. Don't give me, don't give me stink guy. My girlfriend doesn't know I'm married. What the hell's wrong with her? 
<laughs> I'm getting applause from the comics. <laughs> you dirty bastards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's my wife's number one hated joke. She hates that joke. <laughs> You're a good Christian boy. Don't say that. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you one more story. I'll get your first comic up here. Uh, my wife and I, we used to own a store in Frankfurt. And uh, this woman came into our store and she wanted to buy something. Went over to one of my cases. I wanted to be a good salesman. So uh, I walked over to her. And just as I got right behind her, I mean right behind her, she had leaned in, I guess, to check something. And she... Right on me. What do you do? I went, <clears throat> she whirled around, obviously very, very embarrassed. I said, may I help you, ma'am? She said, yeah. I just want to know how much this necklace is here in the case. Guys, I don't have a filter. I said, look, if just looking at it made you fart, you're going to shit when you see the price. <laughs> you're you're going to shit when you, never mind. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for my time. You guys ready to get this thing going? All right, all right. Your first comic, this guy coming to us from Louisville. Please make him feel welcome. Dante Hicksman. What up? This is my first time in here. This is interesting. You got a drive through liquor store with a stage. You think Rick Pitino could set something better up. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. If it's something strange in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? My mom, probably. She, she has all the right answers. Maybe the police. You know, that it seems like their job. Probably not Ghostbusters. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I'm from Louisville. We just lost to Indiana. It sucks. We're the laughing stock. It's still a good time, you know what I mean? I can finally go out and wear my Louisville stuff in public, you know, after this terrible football season. And after getting destroyed by, you know, Lexington. <laughs> oh, man. We're almost into 2019, though. It's crazy. It is crazy to think that for some reason, we still have racism going on nowadays. And since nobody wants to come into agreement, in, uh, yeah, into agreement on who's right or wrong, the only way I figured we can solve this is if Obama and Trump have a boxing match live on pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only way. And if Trump wins, you can put all the funds towards the wall. It, it, <laughs> oh man. Whew. I'm glad that worked, doesn't it? Hey, there's a GoFundMe page, right? There there is a GoFundMe page. There's like fifteen million on there. If you want to donate, you know, do your thing. I I have no opinions on that. That's you. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Hey, if it goes towards the fight, I'm funding for that. I want to see that. <laughs> It'll be the race war of the century. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> who, you got, who, who would you put your money on? No, I'm just kidding. Don't, you don't have to answer that. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> that, that was a trap, sir. That was a trap. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Are you two? Are you two friends? Like very close friends? Who me and him? I, didn't, I don't know. We're, 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 he's, my, he's one of my best friends. Ex-husband, husband. Ex-husband, husband. All right. So how are, where are you in this picture? I'm dating her. Oh shoot. <laughs> oh okay. Ain't no problem with that. Hey, can I ask you something though? Would you marry your best friend? You know, it's like a male. Would you marry your best friend that's a male? I just got a masculine endorsement here. No, she says I would. I'm, I'm, just, just hear me out. I would, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, marrying your best friend would be like signing a lease with your favorite roommate. Yes. 
that that sounds awesome. I can live my college days every day. Christmases are simpler. It's not what do you want, it's what do we want? Do we want 2K this year? <laughs> you, got, you don't even have to do that. You can you don't even have to like kiss or anything. You can change the matrimonial kiss to like a bro five. <laughs> and if somebody judge you, millennials made it simple. You can just call them sexist on social media. You can you can be bisexual. You don't even have to make. You know what you get when you marry a woman? Winless arguments. <laughs> that is all you get. Hey, I'm. Can I use that? Do it if it, if it works. We're blowing up. <laughs> oh man. I don't have that much time. Well, before I leave and get off the stage to celebrate Aaron's awesome shirt, I wanted to read you all a Christmas poem. Yeah. Woo. Oh, got, got to find good lighting. <laughs> this, this poem is called Santa! And it is written, directed, produced, choreographed, and funded by Dante Hickson. <laughs> all right. It's almost that time for that one day a year where everyone starts to share that Christmas cheer. But I, have, but I still have that one question, the question that, that makes me tick. Who is this guy they call St. Nick? Hold on, I can't even read this. Oh my God, this is terrible lighting. Oh. He has eight reindeer, and he has eight reindeer and elves Man, that's crazy. Why do people like a man who don't work? He's lazy. Santa Claus, he must think he has power. I bet he gives the missus a golden shower. <laughs> but I must digress and let you all know that I'm just like the rest. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I put up my tree, my lights on a loop. I even set up extra TP in case Santa has to poop. Mmm, <laughs> what's that smell? I said with I said around seven. I was intrigued. It smelled like it smelled like heaven. Mmm. Mom, what's that? Mom, what's that I smell? I said without looking. She says, Can you smell? <laughs> what your mom is cooking. I did indeed, and that's a fact. It was, mom just made cookies a dozen a pack. I sit and I wait, and I try to stay and I try to stay patient, but it seems like Santa and I just don't have a good relation. I did everything right, or what at least what I could, but it seems like Santa still don't make trips to the hood. Tube socks and bills. Is this really a gift? At least you can give me a, a gift card that I can use for a lift. But, ne but next year, I want nothing, not even a bat. Santa can catch me on that naughty list. How about that? <laughs> Thank you all for your time. My name is Dante. Dante Hickson. I got it right that time. Did I say Hickson the first time? No, nobody knows or cares. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right, Twisted Cork fans, it's that time of the evening where we do ask for tips, and we have a special way that we do that here. This is a free comedy show, but we always ask for a little gas money for the comics and all that kind of good stuff. So on the count of three, Twisted Cork fans, you know what to do. One, two, three. Feed the pig! That's right, it's time to feed the pig. And if you put something in there, you'll make him make a weirdly weird noise, which will be fantastic. Come on, you want to make him make that noise. Make the noise. Got to make, I sound like a chiropractor all of a sudden. Got to make the noise. Make the noise. Make the noise. Oh, oh, oh. was about to do his own Santa po All right. <laughs> all right, all right. You guys having fun? All right, that's like five of you. Let's see if I can get the rest of everybody involved. You guys having fun? 
I love it. We got the wolf pack in the house. Wolf pack in the house! <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, to be a dog catcher. Anyway, you ready? Fantastic. Are you ready? Well, let's get it on. Okay, anyway. Coming to the stage right now, you guys make sure you make him feel welcome. S Sebastian Zabala. <laughs> let's fuck that name up, too. Shit, come on, Josh. Why well, I know you knew better than that? <laughs> Damn it, Josh. I'm sick and tired of you making me look like a short shit in front of my friends. Come on, you know better than that. <laughs> I love you, Mama Sue. Love you. Damn it, Josh. Next time you introduce me, you need to learn to put some more respect on my name. Damn it. Shit. <laughs> Woo. Damn it. I cannot believe it's about to be 2019 in this bitch, man. Holy shit. Yo, so like 2018's been a pretty interesting year for me, especially the last couple months. Uh, I, learned that in Ke uh, I learned that in October that I can never go back to Keeneland. The reason why I say that is because I got recruited four different times because somebody thought it'd be a good idea to recruit me because they thought I'd be a jockey for some reason. Yeah, uh, unfortunately it's not a joke. I'm being dead shit serious. These people, they saw me from far away and they were like, hey, is that a... Is that what I think it is? It's a, it's a short Hispanic guy. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Come over here, little amigo. Get your light ass on this horse. We're going to win this thing. Let's go. <laughs> Crazy, man. <laughs> By the way, don't make the same mistake that I made when you go to Keeneland. Um, don't bet on a horse that has an erection before the race. That does not mean they're going to run any faster. That, that should just be a clear sign that this horse obviously doesn't give two shits about the race, man. <laughs> Well, wait, now that I think about it, I think that's why I've been betting on black horses lately. Holy shit! It all makes sense now. Holy shit! <laughs> so let's see here. Uh, let's see, what happened in November? Oh, yeah, uh, November was election day. Um, I know it's been a while, but give yourselves a hand if you went out and voted on election day. Give yourselves a hand. Hell yeah, respect. I like that. I like that. Now give yourselves a hand if you did not vote. Give yourselves a hand. Yo, what the fuck? I honestly did not expect anybody to clap. I just wanted to see what would happen. <laughs> Holy shit, that was cool. See, that's what I like about going out to a comedy show is because whenever you go out to a comedy show, everybody just gets comfortable to the point where they're like, I didn't vote and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I realized this last election, I realized that it doesn't really matter what party you're in. I think we can all agree that we are all ready for those damn campaign ads to be the hell over with, man. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Yo, yo, yeah. tell me this is not what you heard for like three months straight. <clears throat> Amy McGrath, Andy Barr, Kentucky's truest piece of shit. Yo, listen, we get it. They both suck. Now let me go back to watching a boring ass Chris Paul Paint Manning insurance commercial like back in the good old days, man. I'll, I'll be honest, I hate election season. It's hard to escape all this. Go vote here, go vote there. You got shit popping up on your phone, in the mail. You got people knocking on your door. You gotta pretend you give a shit about what they're talking about. First of all, I don't know why I got so many people asking me if I'm gonna go vote when I don't even look like I'm even allowed to go vote in this country, man. <laughs> Yo, have you seen my face? I look foreign as fuck, man. Holy shit. Yo, when I post a photo online, I don't need to put hashtag foreign. People already know, damn it. Shit. So, uh, a couple weeks ago, me and my friends decided it'd be a good idea to celebrate the end of the semester by going to a strip club. And I, I realized that this is the first time I ever felt bad about going to a strip club, because that's when I found out that my family's not about to get shit for Christmas. I fucked up that night. <laughs> now, I don't know what happens to us men when we go to strip clubs, but we tend to forget who the fuck we really are. Yeah, like I was spending money like a boss. I completely forgot I was a broke college student with limited options, okay? <laughs> Yo, I was getting lap dance after lap dance. That Ariana Grande song finally makes sense now. Yes, thank you, next. 
Thank you, next. I said, thank you, next. <laughs> hey, you know times are tough when you gotta give your girlfriend a McDonald's gift card for Christmas. <laughs> I'm over trying to convince I'm like some baby. Uh, I don't think you understand how many McNuggets we're holding in that gift card right now. <laughs> Anyways, that's my time, people. Thank you very much. Sebastian Zabal, everybody. What do you mean it's me that made you look small? <laughs> Somebody let Santa know one of his elves escaped. <laughs> Stand up when you talk to me, damn it. <laughs> He's great, man. He, he just started not that long ago. He's pretty good, right? All right, all right. Well, we're going to get one of our old favorites back up here. Uh, this guy hasn't been in the cork since the competition. If you guys don't know him, you're going to love him. Please welcome to the stage, Nick Cheney. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mama Sue. What's up, Twisted Cork? Shout out to Josh to give me a little time. I wasn't really planning on this, so I'll keep it short. I ain't going to take up too much of your night, but... I don't know what's new with me, I guess. Uh, my girlfriend recently moved in with me. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, it, it's been good, but it's taken a little getting used to, right? Like, because I think we all know there's two types of women in the world. There are women who cook and clean and women who were born after 1980, am I right? <laughs> well, that's true, too, because, I mean, you know, that's the other side of the coin. It is. I don't know. I got to look at it both ways, right? I got to be objective. And at the end of the day, I feel like it's not all bad, right? So for one, she looks real good naked. That's a plus. <laughs> for two, I feel like, you know, I can teach her to make a pancake, but I have no idea how to reverse gravity, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, went to the doctor the other day, and, and well, he told me I'm fat. So, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, it kind of hurt my feelings. I mean, mostly because he's my eye doctor and that dude's vision's on point. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm not saying being an eye doctor necessarily makes you an expert in nutrition, but something gave me a feeling this guy just really knew what he was looking at, you know? And uh, speaking of doctors, I've got a friend who recently underwent a sex change to become a woman. Uh, it's taking a little getting used to as well, but, you know, hey, I support her. But ever since she's done it, she's just been horning it up with anybody she can, man. Just anybody she can. Woo! Yeah, I mean, it's, it's whatever. It's whatever. I just can't help but think that pussy's got to look like a 1980s Mike Tyson beat the shit out of a special needs kid, am I right? <laughs> got a couple boxing fans in here, do we? All right, speaking of Mike, uh, you know, I only keep bendy straws at my house in honor of him uh, because I believe a man should be able to snort cocaine at any angle he wants. That's right. That's a geometry joke. Uh, so I'm one of, I'm one of those, uh, I'm one of those things you rarely see. You know, I'm a redneck who believes in science, you know. But uh, but redneck science is a little less exact than normal science, right? You know, it's mostly trial and error. So just like you know, a few weeks ago, a buddy of mine told me, "Hey, if you eat a lot of pineapple, your cum will start tasting like pineapple." You know what I mean? And me, you know, the, ever the, the scientist, you know what I mean? I'm, uh, I figure, you know, I'm, I'm going to go get some pineapple and be a gentleman for my lady, you know what I mean? But I went to the store, they were out. So the last couple weeks what I've had to do is I've just exclusively been smoking pineapple OG and pineapple express, you know, trying to, trying to see what happens. But I haven't really been getting the feedback that I'm looking for, I don't think, like, I don't know, the feedback, it's just been weird. Every time I ask her, like, you know, what do you think? How's it taste? All she says is, <laughs> you know? What the fuck is that, dude? You know, like, get your shit together, lady. Like, you think I went to the Salvation Army and bought this fucking lab coat for no reason? Come on, man. I'm trying to run experiments around this damn place, you know? Uh, so, uh, I'm from Eastern Kentucky originally. Uh, I was raised Southern Baptist. 
Uh, if you don't know what that means, it basically just means that once a week, your parents will take you out to this old stone building in the woods, and a grown man will scream at you until you cry. Yeah, yeah I never really got it, man. I always scared the shit out of me. But I'm lucky, man. I can't complain. You know, from a big family, great family, I'm lucky. You know, uh, they're all big drinkers. You know, I'm I'm a big drinker myself. I'm drinking a little tonight. I hope you all are. And, you know, being from Kentucky, I've always been a bourbon man. You know, it's always been my drink of choice. But I don't want you guys going home worried, all right? I don't need you worrying about me, you know? Look, I don't drink because I'm an alcoholic, okay? I drink because I'm afraid if I don't, my animals won't recognize my scent, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's tough, man. Uh, so has anybody in here played Cards Against Humanities? <laughs> anybody? Okay. Uh, all right, I'll leave you with this one then, man. Uh, I never played it until a few weeks ago. You know, a friend of mine came over. My friend happens to be gay. No big deal, right? He brings his uh, boyfriend. We're playing this game. Bunch of us at the house playing, you know, how, the, how, the, how it works. You know, it's like, you know, question comes up. Everybody lays down a card that's relevant to the question. So the question comes up, what keeps you up at night, you know? And then my buddy next to me, like everybody lays down their cards. My buddy next to me lays down a card, and it just says heteronormativity. And I like the whole place went quiet, and I lost my shit, man. Because like, it, you, uh, so for you guys that like, might not know what that means, heteronormativity is essentially like the belief in traditional gender roles, and basically those like Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, motherfuckers you see on the TV, you know, like those guys that nobody wants to hang out with. Like basically that shit, which is clearly nothing that I, you know, that I believe or any of that. But like, it's just it was so funny to me, just the idea of that, of like this guy's just at home at night tossing and turning, trying to go to sleep. And he's just like, God damn it! Why won't you just make the fucking pie, you know? like, And they're still sucking each other's dicks, you know? Like, All right, guys, I appreciate y'all. That's going to be my time. Let's keep it going for Josh Charter. I'm Nick Cheney. <laughs> Nick Cheney, everybody! I, for one, am seriously glad that Nick and his girlfriend moved in together because he stops texting me when he's drunk asking me what I look like naked. So, just glad about that. Glad about that. You guys having fun? Yeah, you have to stay. If you, if you, if you get up to leave, we're going to just boo you the whole entire time. So, you got to stay. Sorry. No. Chains? Chains. Okay. They were trying to leave, yeah. That's it. You hear that? Hell no, he says. Listen to the dwarf. He knows what he's talking about. All right. No. <laughs> All right. He's going to kick me in my shin later. Watch. All right. Coming to the stage, this guy's another local favorite. I love this guy to death. Please welcome David Williams. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. court, make some noise. What's up? Yes, sir. Make woo. Guys, uh, I'm so excited to be here tonight. Uh, I want everybody to be happy for me because I'm actually, I'm getting married, man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Guys, it, mean, it means a lot to me because my family told me, they said, David, something's going to tell you when it's time to finally seal the deal. Well, the pregnancy test says it's time. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and get that ball rolling, if you know what I mean. Unfortunately, that joke is a lie. <laughs> we are not, yeah, unfortunately, my dear, I cannot have children. I pull out, so that's, it's not going to happen, man. But the reason I tell you guys that that joke is fake is because all the time my girlfriend is at my shows, and then after the show, People go up and they congratulate her on our new addition. Only problem is, is she's usually smashed on her fifth whiskey and Coke. <laughs> Woo! Let's party! So I just had to tell you guys, plus we're not having a baby because pregnancy ruins your body. And I don't want to ruin my body, man. My body's... My body's already bad. It's so funny, man, because, like, my girlfriend, like, the guys that usually go out for my girlfriend are, like, 
gangster guys, also known as black guys. Like they just, <laughs> she's got that body, man. And like, I'm not gangster, dude. Like, look at my white ass. <laughs> Like, the most gangster thing about me is my stretch marks kind of spill out thug life. <laughs> like, these, these poor britches I'm wearing, they've been living the snug life. <laughs> it's crazy, man. That's, that's how it is, dude. My girlfriend, she's so sweet, guys. Bless her heart. Guys, we're going through, through some changes, like, spiritually. Like, she just dyed her hair green. But it's, it's really sexy. But, like, nothing says I'm not a Republican anymore <laughs> than dyeing your hair green, right? <laughs> Plus, my girlfriend, guys, I think she, like, we've discovered that she actually likes girls more than she likes guys. And, like, I kind of understand. I get it, dude. But, like, I finally caught on to the signs that she was, like, into girls. Like the way she smacks my ass when I leave the room, man. She says, go on yonder, little pretty girl. <laughs> the way we're having sex, she starts sucking on my titties. <laughs> the way she calls me Megan. <laughs> Just some of the warning signs, you know? So basically, my girlfriend and I, we are in what you like to call an open relationship. Basically, that means she watches whatever she wants on Netflix. I watch whatever I want on Netflix. No questions asked. That's how crazy my family is, guys. Guys, I come from a crazy family. If you guys ever want to meet my family, just go to your local Golden Corral. You guys hear that? I'm not the only white trash in the building today. Because we celebrate everything at Golden Corral, man. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, divorce. <laughs> Uncle Rick keeps the house. We're going to Golden Corral, man. <laughs> Guys, when Grandpa's new kidney took, I took him to Golden Corral. <laughs> it's the only place in town that serves breakfast, lunch, and HPV. <laughs> Golden Corral. Have you guys ever seen how many handicapped spots are at Golden Corral? <laughs> For all the fat people? They really tend to their audience, if you know what I'm saying, man. And it's so funny, guys, because every time we go to Golden Corral, hear me out, my mom, she has like a team meeting in the parking lot. She goes, look at me. David, you know when we get up here, you're going to tell the nice lady at the counter that you're 12. So you eat for free. I know you're not 12, but you're going to tell him you're 12. <laughs> Twisted Cork, I was 12 till I was 18. <laughs> and it's funny how the tables turn, man. Like I took my mom to Golden Corral for her 45th birthday. I said, Mom, look at me. You know when we get up here, you're going to tell the nice lady at the counter that you're 65. You're 65. You're going to tell him that you're 65. <laughs> I thought she was going to be mad, but she's like, that's my boy. <laughs> Twisted Cork, I'm David Williams. Ladies, thank you for staying. Thank you for staying, man. Appreciate you guys. David Williams, everybody. Let's hear from Megan. <laughs> All right, so that's going to do it for our guest sets. We have our booked comedians now. You guys ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You're not clapping. You're not ready. What is what is that? That what what is that was condescending. She was like It made me happy. It didn't make me happy. You want to make me happy? Paint my house. All right, that makes me happy. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to get your next comic up here. This is another Louisville comic coming to us. Please make him feel welcome, Aaron Bullitt. Hey, David, if it makes you feel better, I'm not a gangster, too. 
I just like Costco memberships. That's just how I roll. Well, as you guys can see, uh, Black Santa came late. So, uh, worst case scenario, if you don't laugh at my new jokes, you can laugh at my Raptor sweater. Woo! All right. <laughs> you know, I don't even really know what time of year it is. Unless I see an ABC special, I'm just confused as fuck. Like, I'll wake up and be like, is that the Great Pumpkin? Is it Halloween already? God damn it, I'm excited. Okay, they don't like the Great Pumpkin. All right, let's move forward. Let's move forward. All right. <clears throat> you know what I love about smoking weed, guys? Yeah, yeah. A lot of conspiracies, ma'am. I've actually come up with one myself. Is it a coincidence that aliens usually abduct white people? And I finally figured out why. I will answer this in a moment, sir. <laughs> if you will. Black people made up aliens just to fuck with white people. I mean, like, think about it. What are aliens known for? Coming around at night, usually targeting one group of people, and you really never know what they look like. Now, what's the clan known for? Hmm? <laughs> it's okay, guys. All it took me was one blunt, a bag of Doritos, and some coconut water to figure it out. They love coconut water. Excellent. I'm doing good. Woo! All right. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I feel like the older I get, the more I relate to cartoons. Has anyone ever seen the episode of SpongeBob where he goes into Sandy Cheeks' like dome and he freaks out because he doesn't have water? I feel that exact way when my girlfriend makes me watch her shows without smoking weed. It's terrible, people. I'll just be sitting on the couch looking at the blunt like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I need it! Oh my God, can we please just turn this shit off, okay? I don't care if Keisha and Kiki fought over that purse. Fun fact, Rico's back in town. Nevertheless, I'm getting high. That's just some real shit, y'all. I'm not playing this. Mm, they like that one. I'm taking that. I'm taking that. Did you guys know that in Canada, that... That's right. I said Canada. That's a Kentucky education working for me, all right? Don't you judge me. That in Canada, they have hotels where you can take siestas. Now, if you don't know what a siesta is, it's just taking a break in the middle of the day. Now, I don't know about you guys, but siesta sounds a lot like fiesta. Hmm. I really think we need to investigate our boilers up north, guys. That's a good investment. They got something figured out. They're lukewarm on Canada. Okay. Let's keep pushing. <laughs> You know, um, like I said, my last name is Bullet, and I have a rather interesting story about my last name. When I was in the fifth grade, my school took a field trip to Frankfurt, you know, just to learn about Kentucky's government. At the end of the field trip, we had to write the governor a letter, asking him any question we, wrote, we wanted to. Well, in my letter, I wrote, Dear Governor, my name is Aaron Bullet. Yes, Bullet, spelled exactly like the county. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I read this history book that the man that found that county owned slaves. But then I also read in that same history book when the slaves were free, they got 40 acres and a mule. So, uh, when's my family gonna get that? I haven't heard anything back yet, so I'm getting my reparations one white girl at a time. Mm-hmm. Who wants to get reprimanded tonight? Anyone? No? No takers? You, you sir? All, uh, all right, I'll work on that. Anyway, all right. Women next time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love you. By the way, the, the bucket here, the suey, suey, by the way, just to let you know, for black people, that's fucking terrorizing, okay? I had to say it, but I appreciate the culture. I do, I do. <laughs> like I said, you know, I'm, I recently turned 25, and it's made me think about all these things I've seen in my lifetime. You know, when I was growing up, you know, I saw things like Facebook, smartphones, and GPS. But for me, the day I knew where my culture was really advancing is when the McGriddle sandwich came out. For y'all, I was a fat kid, so I'm like, you telling me right now, I can get syrup already in my pancakes, and you made my whole breakfast into one sandwich? You not only cut my eating time in half, you just made childhood obesity convenient. Thank you, McDonald's. <laughs> solid, solid, a solid one, solid one. Speaking of which, like, in these hard political times, we have to, I think as a nation, ask the real important questions. What political party do you think Ronald McDonald stands by? That did not go the way I planned, but just hear me out, all right? So, <laughs> all right, that's the line, Ronald McDonald. I think he's Democrat. I mean, for, just look, he provides reasonably priced McDonald's, 
at convenient locations, and he has charities, okay? Now, the hamburglar, I think that's conservative. Taking hamburgers from the good people for himself, that ain't right. I don't appreciate that. Now, Grimace, like the purple one, he seems like a libertarian. Seems free, a chill, pretty chill guy. Now, that bird chick, no one really knows her name, so she probably doesn't even vote. You stuck with me. Thank you so much. You stuck with me through the joke. I appreciate it. You're all winners tonight, all of you. Give yourself a round. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And again, don't forget, look at the sweater. If not these jokes, look at the sweater, all right? Look at the sweater. Let's look at the sweater, all right. When I'm up, my time is almost up. But you know what I've always wanted to be ever since I was a kid? Was an R&B singer. Because like your whole job is just being smooth. Like I would love to have the kind of job to walk up to any woman and be like, excuse me, miss, what's your name? Where are you from? Can I come by? And possibly, can I take you out tonight? You know, to the movies, to the park. Now make sure I have you home before it's dark. So you let me know, can I take you out tonight? That's some smooth ass shit, right? <laughs> if y'all look, I might use that on one of y'all tonight. Y'all don't even know. Y'all tripping shit. <laughs> Well, I like, since speaking of R&B singers, you know, we've lost some celebrities this weekend, or even this this year, exactly. I want to take the time to talk about someone that meant near and dear, you know, just for me. I mean, this part, uh, Madam, if you not, I heard what you, do you not know what we're talking about? Would you like me to inform you? Yeah, I can't hear, it's a stage. What, what do you need help with, ma'am? You, you mean, I can repeat the joke, like, I'm here for you. I'm following, I'm just not there yet. Just keep going. It's my fault. Oh, okay, I felt... Oh, actually, I meant for the whole year. I kind of fucked up. I was trying to play it off. Damn it! Uh, ruined it. Ruined it. All right. Well, you know what? I'll start all over. Just for you guys. Just for you guys. All right. We've lost a lot of celebrities this year, and I would like to talk about someone, you know, that meant near and dear to my heart. We're good now? All right. So, <laughs> I mean, this person crossed all kind of racial borders, inspired millions of people to be themselves, and even accomplished feats that no one thought was humanly possible. That's right, folks. I'm talking about Joe Jackson. Or Michael Jackson's dad, if you look confused. Some of you are just looking at me crazy, like, has, <laughs> has anyone ever considered Michael Jackson's dance moves, him just avoiding an ass whooping? I mean, seriously, as soon as he got hit, he's just like, sorry, dad, I won't miss that step again. <laughs> or his ad libs. When he's like, ooh, you think he made that shit up? <laughs> mm -mm. That is an ass whooping sound, ma'am. I definitely made that sound when I ate my dad's two for five McGriddle sandwiches. <laughs> well, you know what? My name is Aaron Bullock. Thank you so much. Woo! Yeah. All right, Twisted Cork fans. It is that time of the evening where we're going to feed the pig again. Prentice, ready? Here we go. Before we get our headliner up here, we're going to feed the pig one more time. So you've been through it once. Here's your chance to participate in this little ritual we do here on the count of three. One, two, three. Feed the pig! That's right. That's that time of the evening where, once again, we make Prentice make really weird noises because you're throwing money into the pot. And it, what's funny is Prentice like, will really get going sometimes. And he was going, Sue! real loud. And this homeless guy stuck his head in the door. He's like, what the hell is going on in here? I was like, no, it's just Prentice. It's fine. Everything's okay. Yeah. A little bit of house cleaning while you guys are doing that. We have shows every other week here at, the, at uh, the Twisted Cork. Guaranteed to be the funniest show you will ever see in a drive through liquor store. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Anybody going to argue with that? No one's going to argue with that. And while I got your attention, I'm going to round of applause for Prentice and Mama Sue for letting us do this here. Five years running now. Five years we've been doing this show here because of those two fantastic individuals. Are you guys ready for your headliner? Are you guys ready for your headliner? This gentleman's coming to us all the way from Ohio by way of Detroit. Please welcome to the stage, JoJo Thug Woodford. How's everybody doing? 
just the ladies. How the ladies doing? Good looking ladies. I, boy, I love you ladies. I do. I, I love you. I do. I don't care if you got two heads green with stomach in your back, ladies. I love you. I don't care who you voted for. I love you. Because ladies do things us men can't do. You know, they greet each other with a, Mwah. how you doing, girl? Go to the restroom together, don't you? Uh-huh. Compliment each other on your bodies. See, men can't do that. I can't go to this gentleman and say, how you doing, sir? Mwah. Um, Can you come to the restroom with me? I I'm bloated and I'm starting to cramp. And then when we get in the restroom, I can't compliment this man on his body. How you doing? Oh, my God, that is nice. Are you doing butt-ups? Oh, that's not. No, pull your pants down. That is nice. I bet you can crack walnuts with that thing. No, come here. Let him feel it. Let him. Come over here, John. Look, feel that. That is nice. No, we can't do that. Here, hold on, bro. Let me up. You know, we can't do things like that. <laughs> I'm coming to you, you know, like you said, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and, um, you know, I, I, I'm not scared to tell you this. You know, I used to be a real drug addict. Crack cocaine was my drug of choice, and I'm not ashamed to tell you. I was so high one night, I was hiding in the bushes, watching my own house, <laughs> thinking to myself, this brother never comes home. <laughs> And I noticed how some of y'all looked at me when I came up here with a name like Jojo Thug Woodford. I was looking at it like, where's the rest of him? <laughs> yeah, I'm so short you can see my feet on my driver's license. I get emotional like this. Me and my wife went to dinner. The waitress gonna ask my wife, would you like a high chair for your son? <laughs> no, first of all, ma'am, I'm a grown man. Second, I'm her husband. Third, put me down. <laughs> went to Kings Island, couldn't get on nothing. Just looking up at the roller coaster, thinking, someday, grown man in teacups. <laughs> Couldn't finish school because every time I try to go, somebody pick me up and take me back home. <laughs> yeah, I'm a black gangster, but nobody take your gangster serious when you're wearing a onesie <laughs> and some Jordan booties was in a gang, but you don't know what it's like to have to go on drive-bys in a car seat. <laughs> I know I don't look like it, but I came up in the 70s. See, I came up in the time where things was good, where the teachers wasn't coming on to the students in school. None never came on to me. Well, it's that one time, but they fired him, and I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I didn't like it or nothing like that. <laughs> and I'm thinking, and, and, and I love whoever came up with the, with the Amber Alert. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Because if one of our kids get lost, all of us will be out here looking for them. See, I came up in a time in the ghetto where if you got lost, you were just lost. My mother used to tell me, look, boy, when we go in this store, don't you ask for nothing, don't you touch nothing, and you better not get lost. But see, I'm a grown man now, married. When me and my wife go to the store, she say, look, boy, when we get in this store, you better not touch nothing and you better not get lost. I got lost one time. I mean, I wasn't really lost. I was just trying to break up. <laughs> and everybody, and they said, how long you married? See, I'm coming up on 15 years. And the gentleman got 45 years. Now, you youngsters, I know y'all youngsters, y'all still making love face to face. I know you are kissing and hugging and slobbing all over. It. I love you, I love you. Me and my wife coming up on 15 years. It ain't even like that no more. She, she used to come to bed and negligee because when we met, she was young. She used to come to bed and negligee the thong on nice, the old raggedy house coat, one sock on, one sock off. The sex ain't even the same. You know, our bed talk is not even the same. You know you was uh, 35 cents short on the electric bill? <laughs> she come in the room, I know, I know, you know what I'm saying? It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't even no romance to it. You know the game is on that LeBron James or something. Ooh, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man. 
<laughs> and ladies, y'all dance together in the club. I remember seeing y'all in the club when I used to go out and do my thing. And you know, that's how me and my wife met. She gonna tell me, your breath thing. It ain't nothing but some vomit. Because I used to drink a lot. That's all it is. It's just some vomit. Don't judge me. So I'm saying what, I, <laughs> what I'm saying, you ladies, y'all dance together. See, and again, I can't go to this gentleman and say, excuse me, sir, would you like to dance? Man, you know, the game coming. Did you see that game the other night, bro? No, turn it around. Drop it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. See, we can't do that. I can't do that with that gentleman. He ain't going to like that. He don't like me to slap him. He just want me to dance regular. <laughs> and you know, I know I'm a little black dude. That statement, I heard it earlier, talking about some, yeah, black guys, they pull it out. No, that's just a myth. I have to jump the poor man out. <laughs> I'm just saying. You got some idea, ma'am. <laughs> White lady going to ask me, is it true what they say about black guys? I said, yeah, we'll rob you. Mess your credit up. <laughs> <laughs> like my wife say, don't steal my medication. You know what I mean? My heart medicine. I'm just saying. <laughs> Being from Detroit, Michigan, I'm telling you, it's just, it's just rough. I, I tell you, you know, and I've been this size all my life. I have. So I just want y'all to know that. Okay? So I don't want no trouble, you know. I had trouble with a white guy at work. I mean, we friends now. He invited me to come hunting with him. Um... <laughs> But I'm, I'm not going to go, though, because that ain't just something I do, you know, because it just brings back too many memories. <laughs> I was watching Roots the other night, and it kind of made me mad because I was looking at the TV, hollering, tell him your name. Tell him your name because I couldn't understand that. How in the world are you taking all of this beating? Had it been me here to hit me one time, bam, my name is Toby Smith, T-O-B-Y-S-M-I-T-H. Some of y'all will get that when you get home. <laughs> That's an old slave joke. That's just something I wrote just earlier. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but ain't, do y'all have this down here like we got in Detroit and, and Cincinnati? Guys wearing their pants way down here. Do y'all see that? Y'all don't have that? Kentucky's a little different. I understand. You have the conservative type. You know what I'm saying? But they're wearing their pants way down here. Showing their underwear. See, they think that's cute and sexy. But it's not, man. That originated from penitentiary. You know what I mean? That, 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 I've been locked up before, and it wasn't no sexy feeling. <laughs> I was wearing my pants way up here. I was walking around looking through the zipper. I kill everybody in here. Uh-oh, here they come. Sit me up. Sit me up. Shh. Sit me up. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. These ain't jokes. It's my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is, this, is, this is my life. I'm telling you, I'm a little undersized. The good Lord that broke me off a little unfairly. I told my wife, I said, when God made me, he broke the mold. She going to tell me because it was too little for anybody else. See, this is the kind of stuff you have to deal with when you've been married almost 15 years. You didn't get that one either? Okay, well, you can get it. But, and then another thing. See, I'm from Detroit where you got strip clubs on every block. Oh, my God. Where's the strip clubs at? Huh? Oh, my God. But I'm not talking about any strip club, ma'am. I'm talking about the strip club you could smell who was dancing that night. I'm talking about when you walk in, you be like, oh, I'm in love. Don't laugh, because that's how I met my wife. <laughs> Trust me, I, I cleared all of this with her before. <laughs> And I'm just saying, I love my, give my wife a hand, you know. I cleared all these with her first, you know what I mean? Because she told me. Because she already told me. She said, look, boy, don't you do no wife jokes or I'm going to knock you naked. I said, what? I'm from Detroit. I'm a gangster. Bust a move. So after I put my clothes back on, what we did was we prayed. Because that's what we do in our house. We pray. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But um, 28 years, seriously, that was not a joke. 28 years clean and sober because I had to, 
I mean, you know, not like you, not like you good people. And this, and this is a beautiful establishment right here because I'm telling you, you would, all that would be shut down if I was still drinking because I did not drink, I did not drink sociable. You know how you drink sociable? I see you people drinking sociable. I couldn't do that. I'd have been staggering through here. I'd have probably got beat up by her a couple times. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just saying how it's good. But I'd like to thank y'all for having me here. And uh, like I said, I'm from Detroit, living in Cincinnati. And it's a great thing. My name is JoJo Thug Woodford. The thug stands for true holiness under God. It's not nothing bad. So ladies, you can put your purses back out. I love you. Peace. Jojo Wood for everybody. Oh, my goodness. What a hell of a lineup we've had tonight, huh? Yeah. My God. Uh, so, normally at the end of these shows, I do a Joe joke. Uh, this is a joke that uh, anybody could take. I stole it. You could steal it. Uh, but I've had two requests for me to do my Winnie the Pooh story. Yeah, yeah. So, I have to do my Winnie the Pooh story, mainly because I love telling the story and... Uh, Nobody usually requests it. So, <laughs> uh, so this story brings us back to 2001, after September 11th. Uh, I was, as I said, I was in the military for 16 years. And uh, if you guys remember, if you don't remember, if you're too young, not looking at anybody in particular, uh, the military uh, was in charge of all the airports after September 11th. Uh, so uh, I, I processed. I was getting ready to go overseas. And uh, the guy, a buddy that I was going through processing with, his best friend was the guy that was in charge of all the airports. The guy was every, every bit six foot 10, 350 pounds. He was a moving refrigerator. And he fucking talked like this because he was from the Bronx. Hey, fuck you. This is what we're going to do. You and you, we're going to go all backstage. We're going to do some fucking shots, all right? That was this guy, all right? I did shots with him because that's who I am. But, you know, <laughs> that's the point. So... I'm going up to the ticket counter, and I'm getting ready to put my bags up there. One bag was 72 pounds. The other bag was 48. The lady behind the counter says, I'm sorry, sir, because this bag is two pounds over. You have to pay an additional $200 to get it on the plane. From across the concourse, I hear, You have got to be fucking shitting me. <laughs> this behemoth flies across the concourse, the crowds part, here comes this huge man, leans over the counter, he starts screaming at this little woman, this fucking kid's going overseas to defend your fucking ass, and you've got the fucking balls to break his over two fucking pounds, you get, get the fuck out of two fucking pounds. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take two pounds out of this bag, we're going to put it in this bag, bada bing, bada boom, kid's on the fucking plane. You open this bag. It's at this point in the story that I need to tell you guys, in my 16 years in the military, everywhere I went, my wife has always put a small Winnie the Pooh stuffed animal in my suitcase. That was her way of saying, this is me going with you. Very sweet. Very sweet. Guess which suitcase the behemoth opened. You would have thought it was a fucking snake, all right? <laughs> this guy opens it up and he goes, uh, It's a nice poo you got there. <laughs> That's why I guess they say, don't ask, don't tell, all right? Get on the plane, queer, all right? <laughs> and that's my Winnie the Pooh story. All right, guys, before you get out of here, how about one more round of applause for the comics you saw here tonight, huh? Aaron Bullitt was here tonight. David Williams was here tonight. Sebastian Zabala was here tonight. Dante Hickson was here tonight. Nick Cheney was here tonight. John Walton was here tonight. Zena Carter was here tonight. 
JoJo Thug Woodson was here tonight. And my name's Josh Sharp. You guys have a great night. We'll see you in two weeks. Oh my God, that's too great.